5,000 subscribers. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. I started out on YouTube with no real expectations and I still don't really have any. So to hit such a big milestone is absolutely unreal, dude. Thank you all so much. I literally couldn't do this without you all. So to mark it in 5K, I figured I'd let you ask me anything that you wanted to and talk a little bit about where the channel's going. Let's get into the first questions. And if you've got anything you want to ask me for another Q&A video, drop it in the comments. Do you remember the moment you were like, okay, I'm gonna learn how to play guitar. And did you ever have moments that you legitimately thought you would quit playing? Thank you for the questions, man. This seems like a really good place to start. These questions are from my dude, Dad Thighs, and he's got such a good skateboarding channel. So if you're interested, I'll link it below. So yeah, I remember wanting to learn guitar so vividly. Growing up, my dad always had a guitar. And when I went to visit him, I would always f about with it when he couldn't see and relentlessly bug him to play it for me. In fact, it's here, I'll grab it. I keep it hung up above my desk so I can see it every day when I come in here to play. It wasn't the best guitar in the world and he wouldn't mind me saying that. He mainly just used to play it after he'd been out for a few beers, but he loved music. When I got to about 12 years old, I decided I wanted to learn an instrument, but it wasn't actually that simple. I loved Linkin Park and Slipknot, and there was a part of me that actually wanted to get some turntables. Not really an instrument, but still music. Of course, I spoke to my dad about it, and he gently persuaded me away from becoming DJ JT, and thankfully, that was the correct decision. My dad really is the biggest reason that I'm here on YouTube and playing guitar today. Anyway, I saved up my pocket money, and my dad Dad took me to buy this like three quarter sized acoustic guitar from Argos that I'd seen. Now, being 12 years old, I obviously didn't have a lot of disposable income, so I couldn't afford an electric, but I brokered a deal with my mum. If I stuck at learning on this e three quarter size acoustic until my 13th birthday, she'd get me my first real guitar, and that's exactly what happened. I started lessons too, and I would say that I never looked back, but here's where I can answer the second part of your question. Yes, dude, there's not just been a moment where I thought about quitting guitar. I actually did for about six years or so. Basically, I was in a from being about 15 or 16 years old up until being about 18 or 19. You know the thing, teenage post hardcore band, no one knows what the f they're doing back in the good old days of MySpace. We got to a point where I was actually talking to a promoter about possibly opening for another quite big post hardcore band from the UK, but right at the same time there was some prime drama with our vocalist. Anyway, there was a blow up, he got booted out, and then after that the band just like pretty much imploded. At the time, this was the absolute worst thing that could ever possibly happen to me but looking back you realize like just how stupid it was and that we were pretty shit anyway <laughs> after that i just gradually lost interest in playing i just didn't really know what i was doing it for and i stopped i was also apprenticing as a tattooist at the time so my focus pretty much shifted to art and i didn't really pick up a guitar again properly until like a good six or so years later when me and my missus bought this house. I did miss it that entire time, but it took all those years for me to really want to play again. And now at this point, I've been playing for about another seven years. I'd love to tell you that if you just keep playing and keep pushing through, everything will get better. But as I've got older, I've realized that sometimes it's better to take a break and really work out whether the thing you want to do is serving you anymore. You can't really know without the break whether or not it's something that you truly miss or whether it's just compulsion that's keeping you in it. For me, I had to find a purpose to play again and now I can barely go a day without picking my guitar up all because of this channel and writing music and just being fully involved in it again. All of that really helped me rekindle what I love most about playing guitar. I do wonder how much better of a player I would be if I'd never quit at all, but you can't think like that. I am where I am, I'm as good as I am, so I'm just making the most of the skills I have and trying my best to enjoy it. Was it a struggle to find your own personal style while learning all of the basic fundamental skills? Last bit, honestly dude, I don't really feel like I have a style. To a listener there might be something about my playing that sticks out or something that sounds like me, but because it's me hearing my own playing all the time, I don't think I really hear it. I don't know if it's just the curse of being a guitarist, but whenever I hear my own playing it always sounds like garbage. The advice that I'd give to anyone who is trying to like find their own style is to just not think about it. Just enjoy playing, continue learning, getting better, and eventually you'll just sound like you. You can go more granular if you want to and focus on specific techniques or sounds that want to be like your thing, but honestly, I would just let it come with time. There's enough to focus on with learning guitar anyway without trying to sound a specific way. So just follow what your ear likes, write music like that, learn the songs that sound like that, and you'll get there. But from talking to other players, most of us want to sound like someone else anyway. So just enjoy playing. Before the next question, let's do a and I'm gonna put this guitar back. 
So obviously this channel has been built on reviews. Because <laughs> anyone cares what I think about a specific guitar, but I am so grateful you do. But the more new guitars are coming out, the more I'm finding that I just don't give a fuck about the majority of new releases. Most companies are just churning out the same guitars year after year with a new finish or a slightly new configuration and I just think it's super boring. So what I've thought is, why don't I focus on trying to find the best affordable, highest quality cheap guitars that you can possibly get? I want to do a series focusing on budget or affordable guitars that fucking kick ass dude. Perfect for those of us that like as much value for our money or so that beginners can find something that's going to get them on the right path straight away. Now, I'm not going to shy away from some reviews of more expensive guitars if the right guitar comes along, but I think most of us really like a good affordable guitar, don't we? If you guys have got any suggestions for guitars or brands that I do need to get on the channel for this series, then please let me know in the comments because I'm making a list right now and you've always got some great suggestions. Also, if you've got any names for the series, leave them down there as well because at the minute I'm stuck on budget bangers and that sounds like a bit of a dodgy movie title to me. Next question, or questions should I say. This one's from Nick, who is a great dude who's been around the channel for ages. I appreciate you, bro. So Nick asks, how did you learn all the music theory that you know? From your old backing track videos, you seem to know quite a bit. Music theory, man, I don't know that much at all. <laughs> the extent of my knowledge is basically modes of the major scale, and that's about it. <laughs> An old mate and jiu-jitsu training partner I had, Sid, awesome dude. He taught guitar and I went to a couple of lessons with him because he fucking shreds. I had basically zero theory knowledge at the time. Everything that I did know from college had like fallen out of my brain so he took me from scratch, started showing me the modes of the major scale. I basically then just put it into practice by writing backing tracks and improvising over them in my own time and that's more or less how this channel started. From there, anything else that I've picked up has just been out of necessity. If I've been writing and I've needed a certain thing, say like an arpeggio shape or something like that. I've just researched it, found it, and then put it into whatever I've been writing. And that's pretty much how I like to learn everything. Basically, I throw myself into tasks without having a fucking clue what I'm actually doing and just learn the bits that I need to know as I'm doing it. That way I only learn what's necessary and don't waste loads of time learning loads of other crap that I'm not going to use and I find that it sticks better. I definitely think theory is useful, but I try to rely on what sounds good to me and then learn what I'm doing after the fact. Music theory is is an incredibly important language for guitar players and everybody should have a little bit of knowledge. That said, my speaking level of that language in particular is probably the equivalent of an Englishman in Spain on holiday trying to order beers. Will there be more original songs coming? In terms of original music, thank you to everyone that's actually listened to my EP by the way, it really means a huge amount to me. I wasn't expecting anybody to fucking listen to it so the fact that some of you have makes me incredibly happy. Yeah, I am actually writing for a second EP at the minute. It's not because I feel like I need to put music out, but it's just because I'm writing all the time anyway. I don't know how far I am through it, but I want it to be about six songs or something like that. So like short album, long EP kind of thing. I do want to say though, my solo music isn't something that I'm like trying to become known for or anything like that. It's just the fact that I write music. That's what makes me happy. But if I've written something and made it, I don't see any sense in letting it sit on an hard drive. I might as well like send it out into the world and see if anybody enjoys it. That actually leads into channel update number two. I've got vinyls made, dude. <laughs> There's only 10 in this first run, but by the time you're watching this video, they'll be up on the website if you want to grab one. They'll be numbered and signed too, not because I feel like I'm a big fucking deal or anything, because I don't. It's just the fact that this might be one of the only chances that I get to pretend I'm a real fucking musician doing cool shit and have an opportunity to be proud of something that I've achieved. Also, this clear vinyl won't ever be made again. It's just exclusively for the first 10 of this print. What do you like to practice on guitar that inspires you? What do I like to practice on guitar? Honestly, that's kind of a tough question. I always have the intention of learning new songs that are above my ability, but when I actually sit down to play, I end up just noodling and writing riffs and end up writing music. For instance, like I've always had the intention to learn the song Lock and Key by Intervals because it's crazy technical and there's a lot of hybrid picking in there, but I tend to just use it to see if my hands are warm enough when I've started playing. The way I practice is kind of the same way that I learn anything. I'll try to write music that is like slightly above what I can actually play or include licks and stuff that I know I can't play and then I'll practice them until I get them right. I suppose it's like achieving two things at once. I'm having a creative output and actually creating music 
but I'm still pushing myself to be a better guitarist than I was on the previous song, which is super cool to do as well. With all the life commitments I've got and hobbies outside guitar and a brain that needs like constant stimulation, I like to try and maximize my time when I'm playing. It does mean that I've had to give up on some dreams that I had with playing guitar, like if I wanted to get super, super fast at shredding or sweet picking or something like that, that would take so much time away from the other things that are important to me. And if I spent so much time working purely on technique, then I wouldn't feel like I'd actually made any progress because I wouldn't have any music out or Do you see what I'm saying? So I guess it's writing music that keeps me inspired, but doing it a way that keeps me always pushing to get better at guitar. I hope that helps and thanks again, bro, for the amazing questions. Bonus round. It's time for quick fire via Instagram questions. Best moment of the journey so far? I, obviously some super cool things have happened like becoming a Jaquetto Picks artist and working closely with Chapman and that kind of thing. Thank you so much to those guys for actually taking a chance on my little channel. But I think the best moment of the journey so far was when I realized that people actually cared about what I had to say and that I could do this. And people were talking in the comments and I got chatting with loads of dudes and you're all super cool. I think that's been the biggest thing for me is just building this bit of a community talking shit about guitars. That's just such a cool thing to me. What were your favorite bands you listened to the most when you first started playing guitar? When I first started playing, I was big into new metal stuff. Um, surprisingly, I'm of that age, but I quickly sort of got into like loads of classic rock stuff. Um, I was learning loads of Hendrix because my guitar teacher was like a massive Hendrix fan and he was, he'd been around for like all that time. I think what really sort of kicked everything into overdrive is finding metalcore, <laughs> Killswitch Engage, Trivium, just bands like that were the ones that I was like, oh sick. Yeah, I'm into this. Also, I listen to loads and loads of Funeral for a Friend as well. Smooth Peanut Butter versus Crunchy. Got to be smooth every time. Not into Crunchy Peanut Butter. The only thing that I like crunching on is Jaquetta Picks. Hey, I'm Norman from Jaquetta Picks. Today I'm going to show you how to prepare and eat the Jaquetta Pick. Firstly, you just want to add some salt. Mm, then a bit of pepper. Ooh. I'm paying you $2,000 a day to make guitar picks. Not, not do this. Wait, what flavors have we got, man? Jack's gonna tell me off for saying that I eat his picks now. <laughs> How would you describe a Malteser? This is a super niche joke that absolutely no one on this planet is gonna get between me and the dude who wrote this. Bro, you tell me. How much do you practice and what's your favorite ice cream? I practice for like a minimum of an hour a day, providing I'm not having any issues with my hands. Generally, I'll try and practice for a couple of hours if I can. And my favorite ice cream flavor is probably Raspberry Ripple. The final question comes from Tortilla Crunchy. Thank you for the super interesting question, dude. They asked, what would you say someone going for budget brands like Harley Benton, ER, etc., is missing out on against brands like Schecter or Ibanez? Kind of hard to justify spending twice the money for a guitar with very similar specs. I'm gonna be totally honest here, dude, and some of you might disagree with this, but I think the main thing that the budget brands are missing out on is just purely a reputable brand name. Think about it, like, how many dudes have you met in your life who play guitar and say dumb sh like, Oh, I will only ever play an Ibanez. There's just no other guitar that feels like that. It's all about having dudes who use the guitar's brand name as an extension for their own playing abilities, right? Say that you told people that you played Harley Benton guitars exclusively. It just doesn't sound as good as being someone who plays like Music Man exclusively, you know what I mean? People will make assumptions on your guitar playing ability based purely on the brand that you play without ever hearing you. It's all projection and like brand recognition. Some dude telling you that he only plays Gibson guitars but you actually see him play and he can't play a pentatonic scale clean. It happens all the time mate. The actual quality of the guitar in a lot of cases is just not that different. Yeah, cheaper guitars might feel slightly cheaper, but it's not to a massive extent. Honestly, it's a massive f***ing lie that in a lot of cases, it's just people trying to justify their purchasing decisions, like paying out the arse for like Balenciaga or something like that. Now, don't take this as me bashing people for buying guitars that they like. I'm not. People should buy and play whatever guitar or brand makes them happy. But what I'm trying to illustrate is that the difference between some of the more affordable brands and some of the more expensive brands is just really not that much. 
Obviously there are some absolutely shite cheap brands, but all of us can spot them from a mile off. What I'm actually talking about is the affordable brands that have got a good reputation for build quality. Ali Benton is like the main example. So to answer your question, I don't think some of the affordable brands are actually missing that much in at least specs. Yeah, they might not be quite as polished as some of the guitars that are coming out of the bigger brands like Schecter, Ibanez, Fender or whatever. That said, my last Fender was shit. The last cheap Ibanez I had was put to shame by Ali Benton. And I did have a great Schecter that was fantastic to play, but it looked like it had been pulled through an edge backwards. It was knackered. You just can't rely on some of the big brands for quality anymore. Don't be scared to buy from a cheaper brand if you do want a quality guitar, but without spending hundreds, if not thousands. My dudes, thank you all so much again for all your support and helping get the channel to this point. If you want to ask me anything else for another Q&A in the future, then drop it in the comments below. Also, if you do want to hit all the YouTube buttons and shit down there, that'd be sick. In the meantime, take care, mate. Stay safe. I'll see you later. Blah!